Hello, so um, I'm currently at the Institute of Physics headquarters in central London. It's the first time I've been to this building. If you just look up at the ceiling, I want one of those in my house. This is the Ryan's belt, uh, so they've got the lights up there. It's a lovely building, and if you look down here, there is this massive thing built out of Lego. Now, I was actually so impressed by this, I built my own one at home. It cost me about £350, took a lot longer than I thought to make. But this is what gave me the inspiration, and I basically copied their idea. Um, so this was built by the physics department at the University of York, and it is a massive nuclear chart. So, I mean, it's made out of Lego, it's nice and colourful, but it actually explains so many ideas you need to know for GCSE and a level physics. Basically, it's um, a massive graph. So, effectively, we've got one axis that goes this way, uh, which shows the number of protons, and up here we have the number of neutrons. And inside this, each colour of Lego represents a different isotope. Now, the ones that you're probably used to using and actually probably see in the world around you are the ones which are notified in black, because these are the stable isotopes. These are the kind of things that we find in everyday life. But there's also other colours here. And actually, these show some of the more unstable isotopes and the way that they decay to become more stable. Effectively, if we look down at it, we've got different heights. And basically, the lower the height, the more stable it is. This is actually related to the binding energy per nucleon, something you might come on to in year 13 physics. So effectively, everything wants to be as low down as possible. And that's why, um, effectively, the sides are higher. So if you had an isotope which was here, it would want to decay through a ser series of events until it got to the black line. Okay, this is kind of almost, this is actually called the, the valley of nuclear stability. So you might hear that phrase. And um, what we can see is there's loads of different colours. Light nuclei are in a kind of a light blue or a red colour, and this is for beta decay. So light things tend to give out electrons, whereas at the far end we've got the yellow, which is alpha emission, and that's the two protons and two neutrons that kind of get ejected from that central nucleus. So light things are beta, heavy things are alpha. You might also notice that there's kind of beta radiation on each side. So what we have here in the light blue is beta minus decay. That's your normal high-speed electron, the kind of your standard beta that you do at GCSE. And then the red stuff here is beta plus. So that's our positron emission. And that's kind of where we can leave most of, sort of the radioactivity stuff at GCSE and A-level. But you'll see there's orange, and dark blue, and some greens as well. So sometimes you have things which have too many neutrons, which are signified by the dark blue. And what you then get is neutron emission. So effectively, a neutron shoots out, um, the isotope will uh, stay the same type of element, but the neutron number goes down by one. Sometimes uh, we have proton emission. Quite rare, but this happens. So this is when, as, as the name suggests, a proton is emitted from the nucleus. Um, it will then change, I guess it's going to move this way. So um, this element here would move this way. We might then move this way again as it emits another proton. So what we have is a series of um, reactions as things try and become more stable. And at the far end, we've got a bit of green, which is actually just fission. And at the far end, should we, should we take a walk? The, the model is just so big, you've got to walk along it. I think they cost like 27,000 pounds to buy this much Lego. Um, what we see here is that with heavy elements, there's very little black. And this is because a lot of these heavy isotopes, they may be formed in, a chemical, uh, in a, maybe a nuclear reaction, and they have such a short half-life, they decay immediately to something else. And the green stuff over here is where things just fission apart. So this isn't even just like induced nuclear fission where a neutron is absorbed and then the maybe uranium uh, nucleus kind of splits in two. These things are just so big, they can't stay there and they just immediately split apart. So this thing here, the nuclear chart, um, it kind of introduces the idea of isotopes. It looks at uh, nuclear stability. You've got the different sorts of radioactive decay. And then the height of this is to do with the binding energy per nucleon. So I think that this is an absolutely amazing project um, that was carried out by the University of York. I think kids have actually built this, so they built it in sections. I think if you try this, you can actually take it apart. So it's pretty solid Lego. I'll put it back. Um, and if you want to find out more about this project, it's called um, Binding Blocks. I'll put a link beneath the video, uh, but you can find out more there. There's actually some videos. So if we, if we look up here, there are some really good videos, really nicely presented, well edited. Again, produced by the University of York. So you can go to their website and find us a little bit more, especially if this is the kind of thing that really interests you. But yeah, that is uh, the binding blocks, the big nuclear chart. Um, and if you want to see the one that I built, it's about a quarter of the size. Um, and I suppose that means it's the 64th of the volume. 
Uh, and that still cost me about £300 to make, so I've got another video linked to the end of this video. Thank you.